Hello everyone welcome to this video in this video let's discuss a poem by ONV Kurupa those who haven't finished loving snehichu thirathavar ONV Kurupa was a famous malayalam poet and also a lyricist who was born at chavarakollam in kerala he was one of the few writers to emerge from the turbulent times of the freedom struggle and revolutionary fervor of the 1940s and keep pace with the changing times constantly rediscovering his poetic voice with the changing sensibilities he was a lecturer at maharaja's college ernakulam university college trivandrum and he joined government women's college trivandrum as the head of malayalam department He was also a visiting professor at Calicut University. He received the Gnanapeda Award, India's highest literary award for the year 2007. He was also awarded the Padma Shri in 1998 and also Padma Vibhushan in 2011. A prolific writer and one of the finest lyricists in Malayalam, ONV's major works include Dahikinna Pana Patram മയിൽ പീലി അഗ്നിശലഭങ്ങൾ അക്ഷരം കറുത്ത പക്ഷിയുടെ പാട്ട് ഉപ്പ് ഭൂമിക്കൊരു ചരമഗീതം ഉജ്ജയിനി എക്സെട്ര ഹി റിസീവ്ഡ് കേരള സാഹിത്യ അക്കാദമി അവാർഡ് ഫോർ അഗ്നിശലഭങ്ങൾ ഇൻ നയൻറ്റീൻ സെവൻറ്റി വൺ ആൻഡ് കേന്ദ്ര സാഹിത്യ അക്കാദമി അവാർഡ് ഫോർ അക്ഷരം ഇൻ നയൻറ്റീൻ സെവൻറ്റി For his work Uppa he received Vaila Ramavarma award in 1982 As a lyricist he had won the national award for best lyricist in the year 1989 and also the state award for the best lyricist over a dozen times Let's move on to the poem Those who haven't finished loving Snehichu Thirathavar It is a long poem divided into eight subdivisions which are further divided into stanzas it is dedicated to n mohanan who is the son of noted malayalam writer lalitambika andarjanam n mohanan was a malayalam language short story writer and also a novelist he received the kerala sahitya academy award in the year 1998 for the novel innalathe mala he has uh, published some 10 collections of short stories including ninde kada ദുഃഖത്തിൻ്റെ രാത്രികൾ എൻ മോഹനൻ്റെ കഥകൾ സ്നേഹത്തിൻ്റെ വ്യാകരണം എക്സെട്ര ഒ എൻ വി കുറിപ്പ് റിസീവ് ദ ഫേസ്റ്റ് എൻ മോഹനൻ സുവർണ മുദ്ര അവാർഡ് ഇൻ ടു തൗസൻഡ് ഫോർട്ടീൻ സോ ദിസ് പെർട്ടിക്കുലർ പോയം വാസ് ഡെഡിക്കേറ്റഡ് ടു എൻ മോഹനൻ ആൻഡ് ആസ് എൻ ഇൻട്രൊഡക്ഷൻ ടു ദ പോയം ദ പോയറ്റ് ഹാസ് ആഡഡ് പോയറ്റിക് ലൈൻസ് ഫ്രം കാളിദാസ ആൻഡ് ഓൾസോ ഫ്രം റോബർട്ട് ബ്രൗണിങ് This poem describes the love relationship between a lover and his beloved who meet each other in all their life to be consummated in love. The theme of the poem is love is the only solace in this earth. Nature itself is a transient entity but the feeling of love exists indefinitely. The first subdivision of the poem is divided into five stanzas. This section explains nature is transient while love is eternal the lover and his beloved through their love of many lives immortalize their love through this song in the first stanza of this first subdivision the lover invites his beloved to sit near the shores of a river the lover explains exclaims wondering whether she knows how beautiful her eyes look just like the fishes in the clear water he doubts whether he could sit there and see the fishes again because there is a chance that they could get dissolved in the water and vanish into thin air just like humans get unknowingly succumbed to this ecosystem although as long as humans exist he says he will sing for her and the same with the same rhythm of the soft beats of the gills of fishes he believes that they live through this song born of born out of love where he immortalizes her through his songs and she in turn immortalizes him through her love for him then uh, he tells about the physical relationship between the lover and his beloved it describes how he enjoys her unkempt hair 
just like the frenzied wind that embraces the forest. Then he uh, kisses her scars away tenderly, like the wind that covers the wounded meadows. When nature sets up the first night chamber for them in the valley of some mountain in a serene evening, they consume it their love and consume the nectar of their passion, even making the gods jealous. The gods maintain their envious stare at the lovers who yielded the power of immortality through a love song. Then in the next stanza, he describes about Urvashi, one of the dancers of Indra's court, Uh, she comes searching for her lover in the earthly world. Even though she doesn't have the permission to come to this uh, earthly world, she couldn't stop coming for the human who stole her heart. So uh, here, the poet describes the importance of love. One who tastes it cannot forget it and they will take many more births for it. Then in the next stanza, the poet gives emphasis to the greatness of music gifted to humans. Then he says that the seasons dance in the shores without any change in its order. And also he says that age, place, attire, language and names may change. But the lovers still try to unite together like the two rivers that try get close by to reunite or the two flames ignited nearby, urns for burning together. So the lovers search for one another, then they part and reunite again. Thus she makes him immortal through her love, and he immortalizes her through his songs. The river, water, fishes and the ecosystem are all part of nature. The lover here drives home the idea that though nature is beautiful, It is transient. It is a slave in the hands of time. For even the beautiful eyes of the fish that he may see today may not be present the day after. He also reminds that the case of humans is no different as we too run towards the conqueror of time, that is death. Our art transcends life. Here he promises his beloved that through his art of creating music, He will eternalize her and she could in turn eternalize him by loving him unconditionally, which will be reverberated in the songs. The poet used two metaphors comparing the beauty of the beloved's eyes with that of the fish in the clear water and the rhythm of his song to the soft beating of the gills.